So where did you watch the Great American Eclipse? Uh, well, we were up on the roof, actually, uh, here. I was at home. Yeah, I had my are. cat as my viewing <laughs> partner, and then I got in to share uh -huh. my glasses with a couple of my neighbors. You didn't share your glasses with your cat? No. Okay. But I can tell Let's you see. I was extremely excited even though we didn't have 100% here. Okay, you want to talk about somebody who was excited because he got to see 100%. This is yeah. Brent Maynard who is the, the um, president of the of an astronomy club in Huntington, the Ohio Valley Astronomical Society. Did I get it right? That's correct. Okay, um, and, and actually Brent went to Madisonville, Tennessee. Uh, it must have just been was this kind of like a dream come true for oh, yes. you? You talked about it. We, we interviewed you before you went, and you were really fired up. What was, did it let down, or was it even better than you It was thought? better than expected. Better than it's expected. A, it's a once-in-a-lifetime event. Yeah. And mm -hmm. as I mentioned at the last time, yeah. uh, we're fortunate enough that the next one is only seven years away, and it's also another close uh, event so that people would be able to get there yeah. quite easily. It was spectacular. And so what were some of the feelings that you had when you finally hit that mark yeah. of totality across the area? Well, it's just it, everything's in all. I mean, everybody starts cheering and clapping and, uh, you know, laughing and kind of get giddy, you know, kind of giggly because uh, it was such an uh, amazing event. You know, that's, that's the darkness. That's oh, when amazing. it went. This is about then. two minutes before totality, so it's still okay. quite bright, even yeah. at 99%, 99 point. 5%, it's still quite bright, but at totality, it, it gets quite dark. Wow. Well, what sort of equipment did you have there? I, I just had a couple that. of cameras, DSLRs with okay. some telephoto lenses. Uh, my friend, um, who I traveled with, Jeff Ball, he's a member uh, of the club as well, uh, took a telescope, and he, he also got some excellent pictures. Oh, so okay. it, was, it was spectacular. Are these the pictures that you're talking about right here? Yes, yeah, so these are through yeah. my telephoto lens and a, um, a just a standard Canon DSLR. I see. And wow. uh, coming right up into uh, right before totality, just that very thin slit. That. And then Amazing. I had a filter on to protect my camera, but right at this moment I took the filter off and I got some other pictures. You know, some of the uh, things they talk about, the the diamond ring, mm -hmm. uh, Bailey's beads, right. the corona, yeah. um, and so, and we actually caught some little solar prominences. It looks like uh, little flames of uh, jet gas coming off the t oh, surface wow. of the sun. Which is, uh, and you can see some of that right there. Yes, That's which amazing. is uh, look at the the top at about 11 o'clock right there. You can see that. That's a solar prominence. Yeah. That's hydrogen gas. It's uh, very hot. It's it's looping around the magnetic fields of the sun. The sun's very magnetic. Oh, and look at as that. Is that, that hot? gas comes across. This is Jeff's picture. As hot gas comes off the surface of the sun, it loops back around and comes I'm back down awe. again. He lo it looks like he's about two miles away from that. The way I he's, know. it's just incredible the way he was able to capture that with his, uh, with, through his telescope. That's and, it, it you know, was, the thing good. about this, this is the idea of what scientists wanted to do. They wanted to study the corona and the flares because this is the only time they get a chance to do that. Yes. And here you can see the corona right here, perfect picture so of that. So that's a little bit longer exposure. This is what it looks like uh, to us. When, when it goes it? in totality, oh. you can see the corona. It's very bright. Yeah. Uh, wow. And, um, it was, it was, uh, it's an awesome sight. Yeah. And in awe, just looking at your photographs. Yeah, you, they, I would have to say that, that you and Tony and Brandon, just so excited about this whole oh, thing. I know, leading up to it, and I know a lot of people, even my mailman mentioned to me, he was kind of let down uh -huh. because it wasn't. Locally. Yeah, because mm -hmm. they thought it was going to get darker here and stuff, and I was like, well, I mean, my eyes played tricks on me, the shadow, this is so cool. Right. But again, it's that all moment of totality that brings that darkness, that yeah. 360 right. sunset across the area. Yes, it was, it was, it was good. Now, when you got to see that and the rest of the club members, did you, was there ever any doubt in your mind that that it would be like this? Did you study it enough to know, or was that in-person experience, uh, did you learn something from the in-person experience that maybe you couldn't have read about in a book or seen in presentations? Yeah, you just, you can't, you can't okay. anticipate the effect. Okay. Uh, going from, you know, light to dark in just a matter of seconds, and just the, the, the view yeah. uh, wow. of watching the sun kind of get blinked out. You can understand why in you know, ancient days where people really were terrified. Must have freaked yeah. out uh, yeah, yeah. by the event. Right. And, yeah. and even here, I mean, did you experience a, a temperature change or could you feel the change in the weather? The temperature dropped uh, probably about 15 degrees. Wow. It was about 93 degrees and wow. it went up 
uh, we estimated the upper 70s and yeah. then came right back up again. Did you, hear, did you hear crickets? Did you notice since you were out in, in it looks like a woodsy we area? We were in the woodsy area and there was a lot of cicadas mm -hmm. uh, in the trees okay. and they quieted down a little bit but they were still yeah. pretty yeah. pretty noisy. But yeah. they, they like the dark anyway in the yeah. evening time. Yeah, so. that's yeah. true. Yeah. And it's interesting uh, as a meteorologist because here I was like, I can feel the four degree difference. And to me, I know in, in certain Even here. Yeah, yeah. In certain locations, they were launching weather balloons to study mm -hmm. the atmosphere yeah. uh, at, at totality. So it'll be interesting to read the findings on that as well. We were up on the roof, as we mentioned, um, doing part of the broadcast, the live broadcast. And we were actually shocked, Brent, because uh, as yeah. we went up that roof, because <laughs> when we went up, it was already, uh, it was probably about three quarters of, of what we would experience here. And there was already a drop, a significant drop in temperature. Uh, the guys who were up on the roof beforehand at 10 o'clock in the morning, they noticed how brutally hot it was because mm -hmm. it gets broiling up on that roof above the station. And they noticed how, how incredibly hot it was. And then as we got as close as we could uh, without totality, we noticed a, a genuine drop in temperature. It was somewhat uh, comfortable up, yeah. up there on that roof, which was the difference. Uh, those kind of things are, what else can scientists expect to learn from what they saw the other day? Uh, the effects on people. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, some of the, you know, not necessarily just the science of, you know, astronomy, but, right. you know, how, how do people handle events like this? Mm -hmm. You know, animals and, uh, as you were mentioning, some of the insects, uh, the, you know, people, you know, doing studies of that. Uh, weather. I know that Marshall had a team mm -hmm. launch a weather balloon uh, out in Illinois. I haven't mm -hmm. seen the results of that yet, but there were uh, several colleges around the country that were doing that. So just uh, getting the students involved in this and the um, excitement that we saw in the children yeah. uh, is, is very encouraging. Yeah, uh, that's true. It gets them excited and thinking yeah. about, uh, you know, taking you know, science up as a potential career. Sure, yeah, and who knows, an event like that, and we said it that day, who knows how many kids may have been affected in a really positive way yeah. from seeing that and knowing that there's something about science that is much more interesting than what you're studying in the classroom and learning in the book. It's real life, and you guys got to experience yes. that real and, life science. And now there's another one to plan for. Yeah. Everyone can kind of yeah. look forward and to and the I, Yeah, I mention that recommend. One. I highly recommend it. It's in... Uh, That's a north-south one in seven 20, years. 24, April 8th. Mm -hmm. It starts in Texas. And it will pass right just west of uh, Cincinnati through Indianapolis, uh, up just north of Columbus over towards Cleveland. So it's, it's, it's an easy drive um, uh, for us from, yeah. from the viewing area. Do you already have your hotel reservations? Not yet, but, uh, <laughs> but those will probably go pretty quick here. Yeah. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about the Ohio Valley Astronomical Society, um, we made it easy for you. All you have to do is go to WSAZ.com and we have a featured link on there. You can check them out. Uh, they have a Twitter page as well, and uh, you guys are just uh, now. What you can do is, if anybody wants to join, you can say, "Okay, get ready for the next one in seven years," because yes. they're welcome to join. Most definitely. Uh, thank you so much for coming in. Great well, stuff. Thanks for having. And thanks for sharing the pictures. That was great, Brent.